Are you interested in loading a large amount of data into Salesforce quickly? In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through what a batch web request is and how it can reduce multiple web service calls into just one. This is a very neat API architecture that only a few companies provide, but when they do, you can use it to save a ton of running time in your process. This video is a part two. In a previous video, which I'll link to in the comments below, as well as the card on the side, I show how I set up the meal flow as well as creating the object type inside Salesforce. So if you want to get more technical and dive into the details, check out that video as well. Now let's jump into learning about batch requests. Inside my AnyPoint Studio, and today we'll be working with version 7.1.0 of the studio and Mule Server Enterprise Edition 4.1.0. Let's open up our configuration file that contains our flow. And in here is a duplicate flow of what we showed in our last video, but we've renamed it multiple upload flow. Just to recap what it does is that it takes a CSV file from our folder usage loader inbound that we have here on the left side, which is at the root of our project structure. We transform our message into an iterator so that the batch job can read it one by one. And then inside the first batch step, we create our Salesforce usage object and then upload the record into Salesforce. And then here, this message just handles some time stamping so that we can create a logger which outputs the details with how long our processing time took. The goal of this video is to improve the processing time of this batch job. Currently, the largest chunk of processing time is in this outbound call to Salesforce. This transform message happens in memory, so it's relatively quick, but making a request out to the internet to the Salesforce servers, wherever they're located, and coming back is definitely going to be more time consuming. This architecture where each record processing through the batch job creates a single Salesforce makes a correlation of one record per Salesforce call. So uh, here are my CSV files, I'll have the number of records in each file. So if I put this 10 record CSV file through the process, it'll be 10 calls to Salesforce. And if I use this 50,000 record CSV, then it'll be 50,000 round trip calls to the Salesforce servers. The way we're going to improve this is by using what is called a batch request. Let me switch over to my HTTP client to show you what I mean. Here what we have is what a typical API creation request looks like. We have the URI to the resource we want to create, a post HTTP method, as well as the JSON object that we want to create. And in our meal flow, this is exactly what's happening. For each record in our CSV file, this JSON is being created and then sending to Salesforce for creation. What some web services have done, clearly not the majority of them, is that they recognize that some users would want to create multiple records at once and in order to save time in the client application, as well as less resources needed on the server side, they allow batch requests. They typically would look like this. Instead of allowing a single JSON object, what they'll do is allow an array of JSON objects. So if you can imagine that we defined an array, And then inside it, if we, we can send multiple JSON objects. And of course, our data would be different. So now the calling application only sends one request with multiple JSON objects and the server accepts the single request. And if it detects that it's receiving an array of objects, it'll iterate through the array and then process each object just as it would if it was being sent a single object. And lucky for us, Salesforce has web services that allow batch requests. Our issue in Mule is we need to collect all our single object requests and bundle them together and create a batch request and send it to Salesforce in a single call. And lucky for us, that's exactly what this aggregator section inside a batch step is used for. It's a little hard to conceptualize what's going on behind the scenes, but essentially, 
but essentially our CSV file, once it hits this bash job, opens up by default 16 different threads. So each thread processes a single record through each batch step. However, inside a batch step, if we have set something inside this batch aggregator, what we'll do is each thread will be held at this line and collected until all records are collected and then the components inside the batch aggregator are performed using the payload which is now a collection of all the records. Let's run a test to show what's going on. So the batch web call for Salesforce uses a different component. But it's the same configuration. Add a few breakpoints. And let's run our project in debug mode. Our server started. And to trigger our flow, we're going to drag our five record CSV file into our inbound folder. So our five record file went into the batch job, created five different threads. The first thread going through the batch step, as you can see here in the payload, a count that ends with 672. If I step through and we stop when the second record on a separate thread goes through the batch step, this one account ends with 371. Again, that's the third record now going through, the fourth record going through, and the final and fifth record going through. And what you've noticed is that all five records have gone through, but none of them has touched the batch aggregator yet. And then after we step through the fifth record going through the transform message, you'll notice now we're coming to the batch aggregator. So we've come just a single time through. You'll notice the payload now is actually a streaming aggregator buffer. I'll go into this a little bit more detail, but let's step through that. And now we're through the whole batch step. So the Salesforce component was only called once. But the difference from our previous video is that this call was a batch web service that contained all five objects in there. And in the previous video, there were five Salesforce web service calls with one record object in each. Let's quickly verify the data in Salesforce. Awesome, all five records made it there with a single call. And now it's time for me to extend the length of this video unnecessarily to show you tips that you'll most likely never use. If for some reason you want to control the number of records in the batch service call to Salesforce, what you can do is open up the batch aggregator, turn streaming to off, and in the box above it, specify the number of records you want to send at a time. And the second useless tip as we saw when we were stepping through, the Bax aggregator's payload was of type stream. If you ever want to modify the payload inside a batch aggregator, it's not the easiest, but what you can do is add a for each loop inside, and then inside the for each scope, you can modify the payload one record at a time. And that is all I have for you today. And what we accomplished is removing one record per call to Salesforce, which was taking up a lot of time in our batch process. And we sped things up by collecting all records inside a batch aggregator for a single outbound batch call to Salesforce. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, comments about anything, please leave it in a comment below and I'll get back to you. 
And please remember to subscribe if you're interested in more videos on API development and MuleSoft technology. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.